Welcome back. In this video, we are learning how to draw an ADM network diagram for PERT problems. So first of all, ADM network diagram, that's an arrow diagram method. Uh, it's very similar to a CPM network diagram. So first of all, let's go ahead and draw our CPM network diagram for this project that we've been working on in the last video. So if we come down here, let's look at this. Activity A has no predecessor. So activity A will come first, and then activity B depends on A. So we already know what the first two arrows and nodes will be in our CPM network diagram, so let's go draw them in. Then next up, we can see that activity C and activity D both depend on B, so we'll know we'll have an arrow coming up and an arrow coming down. And then we can see that activity E depends on C, so we'll have an arrow coming off of C. And then activity F depends on D, so we'll have another arrow coming off of D. But we can see that G here depends on E and F, so these will both have to come down into one node. So that then we can put in activity G coming right off of this, depending on E and F, and we can finish off the network diagram. And then the last thing that we need to do for a CPM network diagram is just come through and we'll label all of the nodes so that each arrow points from a lower number to a higher number. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we'd finish off with seven. So that is our CPM network diagram for this activity. But what we want to do is we want to draw the ADM network diagram. So it's very, it has the same structure. It'll just have a little bit different information on the arrows and nodes. So we'll start off with the same structure. And now instead of writing the name of the activity above the arrow and then numbering the nodes just for IJ numbers, what we'll be doing is we'll be writing where activities are complete. So for example, this node here will be A complete. A complete. This is the node where activity A is complete. Uh, we would actually begin a, we would begin the network diagram it would just saying start and then you can see that this one here would obviously be b complete b complete so we'll just go through and fill out the rest of these now what you can see here is that it actually gets a little bit ambiguous about uh, when you have more than one arrow coming into a node, you see this node here is E and F complete, and we can't actually, because we haven't labeled this E and labeled this F, what we need to do is we need to identify them. So what we will be doing is we'll put in the most optimistic, most probable, and most pessimistic durations under each line. So for example, for activity A, let's go back up here and check. Our most optimistic was 2, most probable was 4, and most pessimistic was 9. So we have 2, 4, 9. So we will come down here and we'll just write that in. We have 2 four, nine. Uh, then for activity B, let's take a look. Activity B, we had five, eight, 14. So we'll come down and we will write in five, eight, I didn't leave myself much room, 14. So it looks like a nine. Make sure that's a 14. And then we'll just fill out the rest of the table just like this. So there we go. This is a basic ADM network diagram set up for PERT problems. Uh, when you're doing per problems, if you're maybe a university class, uh, you might be, just be presented with this uh, this information, and you would be asked to find other information like uh, the project duration, etc. Um, or you may be given the table of dependencies like that, and you'll be asked to build the network diagram, and then you'll get to this point, and then you'll have to continue on anyways. So, uh, uh, well, I'll leave it there for now, and in the next video, we will learn. We'll start with this diagram, and we'll add some more information to it, and then we'll learn how to do the forward and backward pass.